Mr Martin from Australian Associated Press. Uh, Mr Jobo, you wax lyrical about ASEAN. Do you envisage a time when Australia might seek observer status in that organisation? Uh, I'm not going to announce policy, you won't be surprised to know. Uh, as the Parliamentary Secretary, my job here today is to uh, represent the Foreign Minister and not to make policy announcements. But I think um, to go to the broader uh, issue about what we're doing throughout the region. Uh, look, Australia, uh, and I'm going to be mindful that I'll give a short answer because there's other questions I'll probably ask I'll be able to speak more directly to. Uh, but I think what the speech goes to and what I've tried to highlight is that we consider the region to be fast growing, we consider stability to be crucial, and we consider the links between economic prosperity and peace to be uh, absolute. So in that respect, uh, anything that we can do in the region to improve our integration, uh, anything we can do in the region to improve uh, upon the already terrific work, frankly, uh, that we've been able to achieve uh, as a government, I think is going to be a positive step forward. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, sir. Um, my name is Emil Bolangaida from Carnegie Mellon University, Australia. You identified a number of uh, potential risks to the uh, uh, prosperity of, of Australia in the broader Asia-Pacific region. What do you see are some of the uh, crucial uh, risk management strategies, if you will, that the Australian government sees as, as vital? to uh, ensuring that the, the future ahead is as what we would hope it to be? Sure. Well, I think it uh, almost goes without saying that the principle among them is, of course, dialogue. Uh, in the lead-up to the last federal election, uh, the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister emphasised time and time again uh, that we wanted to have a Jakarta focus and not a Geneva focus. And in many respects, I think that that uh, outlines the broad approach the government's taken. If you uh, parlay that with the fact that uh, we've put such strong emphasis upon the work that we've done with the FTAs, with China, Korea and Japan. Uh, you can see that uh, our intention in terms of regional integration is as strong as ever. Um, and let's be mindful of the fact, and I, I often stress this point, that I think if you uh, look at the manner in which Australia's been able to uh, effectively uh, walk through what are sometimes difficult challenges throughout our region, and what I mean by that is uh, we have a very strong trade relationship with China. Uh, we continue to have a strong friendship with Japan and of course we continue uh, to walk alongside uh, our friend the United States. Now sometimes uh, these three don't all sit comfortably with each other. Uh, yet Australia I think has successfully navigated this pathway uh, for some time. So crucial to prosperity is of course the role that we can play uh, and it's a mixed role of both leadership as well as participant uh, but a mixed role in making sure that throughout our region uh, we speak frequently and loudly uh, in terms of our commitment to regional prosperity and to regional peace. Uh, I think a reaffirmation of those core values, uh, as well as the values upon which as a nation we've been founded upon, uh, the importance of trade not only to our uh, national interests but of course to those that we trade with, uh, and an articulation on an ongoing basis that it's in our collective interests uh, for that to remain front and centre, I think is perhaps the best inoculation against any instability that might take place. Let me then, <coughs> Chairman's prerogative. Um, I, I, both the Treasurer and yourself have reiterated that the government is committed to and welcoming of uh, foreign investment. Um, there has been some reporting of recent times that uh, perhaps that welcome mat is not as enthusiastically embraced by some of the Cabinet colleagues uh, in this government. Uh, particularly around Chinese investment in agriculture or Chinese investment full stop. Do you have a, a comment, without commenting on policy per se, but a comment as uh, in your role as assisting uh, with two significant cabinet ministers in advising on policy? Sure. Um, I think John Howard used to say we're a broad church. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's no surprise that there are uh, different points of view that sometimes are put forward, but what matters at the end of the day is government policy. Um, I, for one, have been around the political process for a little while now, Steve, um, coming up to 15 years, and uh, I think it's a strength, frankly, to have uh, different points of view articulated, debated, uh, the merits analysed, and then a, a consensus opinion reached. But if you look at government policy, it couldn't be more clear. Uh, when I was Joe's parliamentary secretary, 
uh, had oversight of the Foreign Investment Review Board. Uh, I approved uh, around 800 uh, FERB applications worth around 150 billion. Uh, over that period of some 18 months, uh, we said no to one, which was the ADM bid from the United States. So when you consider that we had 800 approvals, one knockback, 150 billion worth of investment, uh, I think that that speaks more than perhaps um, the musings of any one particular individual or otherwise in, in the chamber. Um, we are very focused on foreign investment, uh, very focused on the positive success that foreign investment provides in terms of our national prosperity. Uh, I think sometimes people get a little ahead of themselves. Uh, if you look at, for example, uh, recent announcements in relation to uh, prosecutions that might be taken against those that have breached the rules, uh, the real story there isn't about some kind of pushback against foreign investment at all. The real story there is simply to say, well, we haven't adjusted the rules around foreign investment, but we're seeking instead uh, to be uh, in a stronger position to enforce the rules. Now, when I was Parliamentary Secretary, I was reasonably satisfied uh, in the divestment arrangements uh, that FERB had undertaken. Uh, FERB would look at where they felt that there was a breach or had uh, realised that there was a breach uh, and when, then would negotiate with parties to divest, as, in, as most recently occurred with the uh, $39 million home in Sydney. Uh, so I think sometimes uh, elements of the community get carried away by uh, certain announcements, but as I said, in reality, when you look at the policy, the policy has been very welcoming, continues to be welcoming, policy parameters haven't changed, uh, all we've done is made clear uh, that we will not tolerate those that continue to, or would like to, flout our rules. So um, the story is a straightforward one. Foreign investment is good for Australia. We want to encourage foreign investment uh, and it is going to be an ongoing uh, benefit to our nation to maintain it. Yeah, comments like that, Parliamentary Secretary, on the way up. <laughs> Could you please join with me and thank the Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you.